Now, of course, we're hoping to get Gareth. Everyone's hoping to get Gareth. We couldn't get him. We haven't got him yet, but we have the next best thing <laughs> in his agent. Let's say hello and good afternoon to Jonathan Barnett, who joins us now live on Drive. Jonathan, hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. It's very nice to speak to you. But uh, I'm cheaper than Gareth Bale. So right. <laughs> Hold on. No, you didn't mention a cost to me. This is news. This is breaking news. Um, listen, thank you so much for coming on. A real pleasure. Uh, I suppose the obvious question is, is listen, the news broke today. When did you and Gareth discuss it? And when did you come to a decision between you? Well, it was Gareth, completely Gareth's decision, not mine. He's been thinking about it and uh, he's discussed it with his wife and... And they think now is the best time. And I must say, I think I agree. I was going to say there, Jonathan, do you think he's been thinking about this for a long time or do you think this is quite new? I think it's it's been on his mind. I mean, obviously the World Cup was something that he wanted to do and he was working towards that the last few months. So I think it's it's great that uh, he's finally made a, a decision and... He'll be happy. He's very happy and content now. Was there one main reason as to why he's retired? Because in football, in terms, he's he's still relatively young. He'd be thirty, I think, thirty-four in July. So, was there one specific reason as to why he's decided to call it a day, Jonathan? I think he realised his body is not what it was, um, and he didn't want to put himself through it anymore. I think when you when you reach the level that he's at. I think it's very important that you bow out at the right time. Um, let people have good memories of you. He, he doesn't need to do anything else. He's proved everything. He's got a list of achievements that are quite amazing. Um, and I think he is the best player that Britain's ever produced. And I just think uh, it was right for him. Why carry on? He couldn't have produced that level anymore. And that's it. Jonathan, you said it there, and I agree with you. I think he is the best player the British player we've ever produced. Do you think, considering what he's done, the, the accolades that he's got, the achievements and what he's done, that he gets the credit he deserves? No. I think that's a lot to do with the press. Uh, I'm sorry to say it. But I think we have a problem in Britain. We don't like to build people up. We only like, like to knock them down. So he got up to a certain point and then everybody criticised him. If you look at, for example, Cristiano Ronaldo... Nobody in Portugal really, really not ever said bad things about him. Not that there is anything, but they always. But in Britain, that's the thing that we have to live with. What about what about the Spanish press as well? Do you think they're as guilty? Yeah, obviously it's Spanish, but I'm more concerned about the British press because mm. he's British. Mm. The Spanish press have got their own problems. The, the standard of journalism there isn't quite, shall we say, as high as one would expect. Do you, Do you think it would be one of those things that? We'll look back at his career today, the next six months and so on, and then all of a sudden we will start appreciating him and and giving him the respect he deserves. Because when you look at his his honours, five five Champions Leagues, um, he won the, the Liga title three times. The, I mean, the list goes on. The Super Cup, of course, in Spain. And let's not forget he won the League Cup with Spurs as well. Probably a greater achievement than anything else <laughs> I've just mentioned. Do you, think, do you think over a period of I time... I think that's a miracle. No, <laughs> but do you, do you think that over maybe the next six months or even a year, I mean, it tends to happen, sadly, when people retire, it's only them when we go, oh, do you know what, they were a great player. Do you think maybe public conception would change? Yeah, I think over the years, when you start, well, months even, when you start playing back as you do now on television now, to see the goals he scored. and He scored them in games that meant something. He didn't just do it in games that didn't. That was something we've got to realise. He's, a lot of his great goals were done in great, in very important matches. Mm. And I think l- people will look at these goals, the overhead kick in the, in the Champions League final and things like that, and, and realising just how good he was. Jonathan, when you look at him now, and I don't know if you spoke to him, it's, it's quite raw because he's obviously just retired. But what can you see next for Gareth Bell? Could he be a coach? Can you see him staying in football or do you think he'll, he'll completely opt out of that? I... He's only retired today. I think he's going to think about things. You know, today it's different to years ago when, you you know, unfortunately, when a lot of players had to, when they retired, they had to go looking for jobs and working. I don't think Gareth's in that position somehow. Um, He'll be all right. He's he's got enough to live for another couple of weeks. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, no, luckily... 
he's looked he's he's well looked after and thank God he's got enough for that he can decide what he wants to do when he wants to do it. What? And he'll he'll do things that he wants that he's happy to do. And that's the greatest thing. What what do you think he'll do? Do you think he'll stay in football or do you think he'll move away from it? I, you know, when we first met, I said to him, you know, the greatest thing in the world is is when you retire that you you if you want to do any work, it's because you want to, not because you have to. And I said I promised him that. At least I kept my word there. So that's it. He he'll wake up and decide what he wants to do when he wants to do it. Mm. There's no rush. And he's got some ideas. Do, do any of them involve golf? You know, he's a very do, clever man off the field, but trust me. Do you think he he'll, loves golf? He'll try his hand at maybe professional golf? I, I don't think so. But he, who knows? He, he can surprise everybody and yeah. wake up and decide to do it. Yeah. Wait, let me ask you this because we, it wasn't that long ago he. He signed for um, Los Angeles FC, I think it was June this year. And, of course, there was speculation surrounding where his next club will be and whether or not his next club will be purely just to keep himself fit for the World Cup, of course, understandably. Did yep. you did you have any conversation with him around the summer before the World Cup that after the World Cup he may retire? Or is this is this quite relatively new to you as well? No, we didn't want to discuss his future. He only wanted to think about playing in the World Cup. So we left him alone to... to to go and play in the World Cup and to think afterwards what he wanted exactly what he wanted to do. Mm. And he made the decision with his wife, and family and everybody else and we we all respect it. What um what are you gonna do now? Because of course, you know, you've had this partnership with him for a long, long time. How how are you feeling today? Very humble. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I lost you on the okay. it, it, Very it, humble. Um I said, I said to my partner, David Manassi, and to my son, Joshua, who's been looking after him, I can remember going to, as a young boy, going seeing him and his mum and dad and talking about we'd love to be his agent at the time. And now it's time flies so quickly. And now he's retired. You know, he's been great. He was fantastic for my agency, fantastic as a person. His family, and this sounds like a cliche, his mum and dad were the nicest people in the world. And it's been an honour to look after him, uh, but you know I've got another. I've got a few other players I look after now, so I've got to concentrate with them. Has he bought you like a carriage clock or anything for years of service? Um, I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep um, waiting. Yeah, but yeah, I'm going to say I don't think he's the right one. I remember <clears throat> um, when my son Joshua got married, he phoned up and asked. Um, what he'd like for a present to Josh because he's very close with Josh and he didn't know so he bought him a beautiful desk for Josh's new home and about a month later uh, Ronaldo got married and his agent he bought, sorry Ronaldo's agent got married George Mendes and Ronaldo bought him an island <laughs> <laughs> So that is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, but it's a nice desk, him, yeah. We, yeah, we, I think we told him what he could do with the desk. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. That really is. Listen, um, I won't keep you any longer. I really appreciate. It. Sorry to drive you mad to get you on, but I, it's very kind of you that you, you've taken the time to come to speak to no, us. It's a pleasure. Um, listen, you know what? it's been an honour. It really has been a great honour. One of the great honours of my life that he's um, that he's uh, that I looked after him. He allowed us to be his agent. And I'm forever grateful for that. Well, listen, we're grateful for you, for you, for you and your time coming onto the show. Before I let you go, can I drive you mad for one last time? Yeah. Can we get Gareth on this week? What, what do you mean one last time? Hopefully, I've got other players. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not. For, for, I'm not. I'm not retiring. <laughs> I tell you what. You get me Gareth. I'll buy you another desk. <laughs> okay. At the moment, he need, he's, we're not going to ask him anything at the moment. We're going to give him a few days. Okay. And then we'll talk. Okay, um, but listen, you know? be, before he comes on to any other show on on national radio, can we get him on ours before anyone else? I'm an agent. You better give me a few quid to think about it. Okay. All right. Get that desk <laughs> ordered. <laughs> we'll, we'll, um, we'll hold you to that. Listen, again, Jonathan, um, listen, well done to you as well, because it's not just Gareth that's been on the, the journey. It's you, of course. I mean, it's just... What a, what a trip you've both been on, you know, since his time at Southampton and Spurs, and then of course all that time. Oh, over it's in been Spain. amazing. You know, I never, I came in this business, I didn't know it ever. The suddenly thing I've broken the world record, which and things like that. It's been an incredible journey, mm. incredible. 
And obviously, today we're the largest football agency in the world. So a lot has to do with Gareth Bale, and I'm forever grateful. Yeah. Well, listen, we are going to take calls on just how great Gareth is. We, I think we all agree, actually, that he's probably the greatest British player of all time. But we'll be taking calls on it. That makes probably you the greatest agent of all time, I'm guessing. But I don't want to blow your trumpet any more than all. No, but have. I, would have to- I, I would have told you that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I know I got your text. I could just about read you right. Listen, um, <laughs> Jonathan, thank you again. A real pleasure. I'm genuine from my, bottom of my heart. I appreciate God bless your time. You. I'll speak to you in a bit. Thanks, Jonathan. Bye. There you go, Jonathan Barton. What a great story that is, by the way. The but- desk and the island. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that before. That's fantastic, Honestly, isn't it? Put him an island. Oh, that is a nice desk, that is. Yeah. What did, what did Ronaldo's agent get you? Yeah. He got you what? <laughs> an island. Okay, yeah, we can't compete with that. Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.